All right, my friends, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for anyone who joins us on Zoom and thank you for anyone who watches us on, on uh, YouTube. I'm gonna ring the bell here. I'm gonna ask you to listen carefully. Here we go, listening carefully. Here we go. I'm gonna ask you now to take a nice deep breath in anywhere you are at any time you are at. Take a nice deep breath in and make a nice ah sound. Ah. Let the breathing mm, come back to normal and just feel, feel how good that was, how, how wonderful that was. So thank you very, very much. And thank you to the Lake Harriet spiritual community for having me in. My name is Drake Poe. Uh, I am a meditation instructor, I teach yoga, I teach uh, uh, conflict resolution and stress reduction. And so, you know, in large part, you know, I, I really, what, what I do is what I think what everyone should be encouraged to do right now. Uh, right now, I, I'm doing a series on my YouTube channel, which I'm calling an invitation to genius. And to me, genius is something that we are, we are all needing right now. To me, th that we have to understand that it takes courage to access the the energy and spirit of genius you know uh, genius is the way i see it is not as an individual the way that i see the the energy that we call genius is what more like the ancient greeks and romans used to talk about when they talked about the spirit of genius genius was an energy that would come on someone it wasn't an individual it was genius that was flowing through the individual and so that's kind of how I see the, this aspect of genius. It's, it's when you, know, you, you come up with an answer that you didn't expect and suddenly you understand how to handle something that you had no idea how to deal with. To me, this is that relationship to genius. And so I would suggest that you know, right now, I personally, I don't know about you, but I personally am needing to access some energy of that genius relationship. And, and you know, it's interesting to me because we all would like to be that, you know, we would all like to feel special. We all have this idea of what it means to be a genius. Uh, a lot of how we think of what it means to be a genius is not in terms of the original word meant, but now it's, it's more quantified, it's objectified, like this individual is a genius, like Einstein was a genius. And so I'm actually pointing to something else. I'm, on, I'm pointing to the fact that when you are in your authenticity, when you are your authentic self, when you're in the heart of who you are and who you really are, not who you are trying to be to be something for other people and not as a reaction to other people. But when you are really shining from yourself, you're going to be in that spirit, spirit of authentic genius that comes through you. And that really comes in the process of us becoming more honest with ourselves and more able to be with our own vulnerability. And so that's why I call it the courage of, of, of genius. It takes courage to find our genius. In as much as we want it, on some level, we don't want it. On some level, we don't want to be our best self because to be our best self means that we met some unique sort of challenge that really made us step up to becoming that best self. You know, people always want to talk about growing. They don't want to actually have grown. I mean, they want to have grown in the past but they don't want to be growing right now. But, you know, to me, we have to understand that, no, we actually do want to access that energy that we call genius. First of all, I think it's very important that we claim that energy ourselves. You know, it's like Michael Jordan. You know, when Michael Jordan was at the height of his career, he had to be able to claim that energy. He was a genius in that realm. You know, so to me, it's really important for us to claim the possibility that in some sense in our own life, we have that authentic ability to manifest genius in our life. And when, I, and when we do, it doesn't matter where you do, but when we do, it, it affects us in other areas of our life. When Michael Jordan was accessing genius in his life, it didn't just happen on the basketball court. You know, as he was going around his life in different, er uh, different parts of his life, when he went to the gas station or the grocery store, he walked with a certain energy because he knew that he was accessing his best self. And so I would suggest that's the true for all of us. If we are accessing our best self in any particular part of our life, it will affect every other part of our life. And, I, and that's why I think it's really important for us to be doing here right now. Again, 
your genius is also connected to where your life is a little bit on on edge, where it hurts. Of course, you know you know that you remember that saying, uh, "Necessity is the mother of invention." Well, that's what that means is that something came about that made you have a need, and all of a sudden you came up with an idea. Who knows from where? That's the that's the spirit of genius that ended up making us have some sense of something we had no idea of before. That's what real genius is. There's an expansion from here. Oh, well, hello. Hi, Laura. Thank you for joining us. So th there's an expansion from here suddenly to there. We didn't know what was going to happen. It's here, and all of a sudden, it's like whoosh, there. And that's that relationship to genius. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, it makes sense to me. <laughs> You know, see, this is one of the things, too, that we have to understand that, you know, accessing genius for yourself doesn't mean that it has to be recognized by other people. The Lola Sutra teaches us, and, and by the way, I don't know, maybe you recognize or noticed, you, I'm probably, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting your det detective skills have picked up that I have an issue with books, and you know, I probably need an intervention with books, right? So someone needs to tell me, okay, enough books, Drake, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, the, the point is, is that in the, in, the Lotus, in the Lotus Sutra, we find out this idea of genius as being something that is connected to who we are in being. And, and it's a direction, not a destination. So, so I want to, again, thank you for being here. And I also, you know, want to thank you for, you know, taking the time to, to even consider this. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a really important element because we have to ask ourselves, what is genius? What does it mean to us? It's important for us to take a look at the word. And we also have to ask ourselves, how do we create a situations in which we can access it? You know, there's, these, there's moments, for instance, that uh, you have people who have great technical skill, but they don't have access to that energy that we call genius. You might have a musician who has great technical skill, but he, doesn't, or he or she doesn't have the ability to write a great song. And so we want to begin to understand how we can create uh, relationships to genius. Uh, genius is something on some level that is, is, is a spark. It's something that happens to us, right? I mean, if we had control over it, we'd be doing it all the time. Genius is something that we have to serve. It doesn't serve us. But when we do have it and when it surges through us, we find that, that it's a very enjoyable experience. So, but at the same time, we, we know that we can do certain, do, do certain uh, activities that create it a more likely relationship to it occur. You know, genius as an example, as a metaphor is when you want, when you're hot and you, you know, it's a really, you know, a really hot summer day, someday it will happen again. And then all of a sudden you decide, wow, I'm gonna open the window. Now you can't ensure the debris will occur, but you've dramatically improved your chances by opening the window. That's the same way that we are with genius. We can't make it happen, but we can set about circumstances in which it will be more likely to happen. And we can also understand, you know, some of our, you know, sort of deeper workings, why we sometimes do certain things like thrill seeking, because what we're really trying to do is access our own energetic experience of genius. And so I want to suggest that we can do it in a lot more healthy ways. And that you, by you accessing your relationship to genius, you can support the world around you because we really need you to be your best self right now. I, you know, that, that makes sense to me. You know, a calmer, more confident you is going to be better in the world. A calmer, more confident, less reactionary you is going to be better in the world. And so this is part of what I am suggesting. Now, at any time, please, I would like to encourage, <clears throat> excuse me, and ask anyone who is available here, if you have a question, please ask it. Please ask it, you know, access your genius. So, so right, right away, we, we step on one of the relationships to genius, and that is to be bold. When we are allowing ourselves to be bold, when we are allowing ourselves to just follow our intu intuition, we are closer to accessing genius. So this is part of that relationship that we are talking about. Being bold works to access genius. So what is the opposite of being bold, which is being timid? 
you know, being trapped by anxiety is the opposite of accessing genius, or, or, or at least the opposite of the uh, relationship to consciously improving that possibility of accessing genius. So, you know, we want to understand some of the different elements that make it more likely to occur and make it less likely to occur. So it's not that being afraid doesn't support accessing genius. You know, there's a moment of flash fear. You, you know, someone uh, breaks into your house and you get scared and you do something spontaneously that works. That is an access point of genius. Or, you know, I've seen many times where people or videos of people, we probably have all seen videos of people where they weren't paying attention to their child or a child was suddenly stumbling into a dangerous situation. I've seen people catch babies that weren't even their babies. That was a moment of genius. Sometimes genius is, is really getting scared spontaneously. However, if we are entertaining that state, if we're entertaining the state of anxiety or fear, if we're making a regular pattern of stepping into that state and sort of setting that state on simmer, if we are always simmering our anxiety, we are automatically blow, blowing that candlelight out, that, that, uh, that uh, uh, access point or, or the pilot light, so to speak. Ge you know, genius, the pilot light is that genius. When we just you know, consistently, consistently are putting ourselves in states of anxiety, you know, through the titillation of what we are more afraid of more than what we actually want to see have happen, we blow out the candle that is our relationship to genius. And we just can't afford to do it right now. We can't afford to do it right now. You know, um, so uh, in my life, in my background, I had the good fortune of, of uh, you know, beginning do, to do meditation practice quite early. I'm 57 years old. And I started doing meditation practice quite early in my life. And, and it, you know, I was fortunate enough to be in a challenge, you know, very, very challenging circumstances that put me in a position where I had very intense relationships to emotions, especially fear at certain points in my life. So I began to work with these relationships to these, these emotions. And those emotions act, actually ended up being my access point to my own personal relationship to genius by learning to, to be at peace with what is, we end up creating more opportunity of what we would like to be. You know, by learning to be at peace with what is, we create a relationship that, to, that allows ourselves to be drawn to what we want rather than being fixated on what we don't want, which is what our fears are. So simmering those fears, having those, uh, you know, getting up right away in the morning and checking the news, being in contact with the news all day long, these are ways of, of cutting yourself off from genius. Genius is expansive. It's creative. It's, it's like uh, sunlight, you know, sunlight or, or um, you know, the reflection of a mirror. Genius takes a look at everything exactly as it is, accepts it as it is, and all of a sudden, by learning to relax and by learning to listen, all of a sudden, it flows through us. And so, you know, we want to be aware of some of these processes that can that can connect us to it. So let's 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 try one right now. Now, you know, again, one thing I would like to ask you all to do now, you know, I highly, you know, I highly encourage if you are interested in sharing your image, sharing your image. And by the way, in the process of this conversation, please ask questions if you feel moved even in the slightest. You know, now we're going to be doing certain practices in, in the course of this session today to act, create that invitation to what I call genius. So, so the very first thing I'm going to suggest is that if we want to find our own relationship to genius, we have to understand that we want to balance the inner and the outer world, right? This is part of what I would consider this idea of having an open relationship to the spirit of genius balancing the inner and the outer world. So if you find yourself so sucked into everything going on in the outer world that you are always almost sort of stumbling forward, if you find your nervous energy really, really built, I would suggest that what, one of the things that we need to do, and we all need to work on doing this on a regular basis, is <sighs> relaxing a little bit. So it's just like anything else. Genius is about creative flow. 
Genius is expansive. And so if we want flow, we, we, can't be, we can't be restricted. If we want flow, we have to open up. If we want flow, we have to be open hearted. And so part of this process is number one, we have to really work on an everyday basis to ground and calm. And secondarily, we need to work on the ability to have manifestation, to create the world that we would like to be in. And not just by force of ego, because that cuts us off from genius. Do you notice how people who, uh, you know, again, it's really about vulnerability. We have to train ourselves to be comfortable with our vulnerability. And we have to train ourselves to be comfortable with our vulnerability from moment to moment and not be so resistant to our own vulnerability. Our own vulnerability is our way that we can access genius. I mean, of course, genius is going to come from where you feel most sensitive. You know, our artists are incredibly sensitive. You know, people who've gone through a lot emotionally, who have a lot of trauma, have a lot of power and energy of emotion. And so those people also have what the teacher Adida called the wound of love. That's your point of access where you can have compassion. So we want to learn to ground and calm first, and then we want to access manifestation. But by, gr by grounding and calming, what we learn how to do is just sit back and let things be as they are. This is the first point to me in accessing genius. Genius is always about accessing from where we are. We have to learn to love who we are and we can't love who we are with lo without loving all that is. So genius is about accepting what is. So let's start off by doing just a little bit of relaxation. A little bit of relax relaxation. I'm gonna ask you just to sit up nice and tall. Mm. And just get into your body a little bit. <clears throat> Breathing, sitting up nice and tall, chest is up. Find your breath and begin to slow your breathing down. Breathing nice and easily, slowing your breathing down and tapping into intention. Allow your energy just to drop a little bit. Slow breaths in and out. We're slowing the breathing down. Now dropping your awareness down into your belly. So we're slowing the breathing down and dropping awareness at the very same time into our belly. Now across the entire belly in, uh, in Zen Buddhism, certain sects of Zen Buddhism, they call the whole bottom part of your belly the tandem. Find your breath slowing in and out. Now your awareness is in the tandem, but let's concentrate it even further and bring it to a point right below the navel, an inch below the navel, two inches below the navel and a half an inch in. Slow breaths in and out. Be aware of that spot. Pretend like there's almost like a magnetic spot or like a lead spot that's just pulling your energy down. Nervous energy is being pulled down into your lower abdomen, into that one spot, the hara and sloughing off into the earth. In some, in some backgrounds, they call it the lower dantian. Slowing your breathing down, dropping awareness into the hara. Now, anytime you have a very challenging circumstance, perhaps someone you feel afraid of, perhaps uh, someone you're angry with, even some situation, some situation in the world, we find ourselves sort of having our attention collapsing on that situation, that person, that that situation, that energetic in our life, where it's sort of always there in front of our face. It almost creates a deer in the headlight effect. Slow your breathing down. And be aware, every time you exhale, it's a release. As you, uh, as you exhale, let the jaws relax, let the neck and shoulders relax, the chest is up slightly, slowing the breathing down, drop awareness into the horror and widen your awareness. Notice details. Be aware of the temperature of your toes. Now doing these three elements all at once, the slow, even, rhythmic breaths, awareness in the hara, 
Noticing subtle details, peripheral vision, the sound of people walking in your house, breathing, breathing nice and easy. Now the vision is relaxed and soft, or even with your eyes closed, now the breathing is going back and forth, attention in Nahara, awareness is nice and wide. This is the fourth element in your mind. In your mind, begin to say the phrase, I am. The jaws are nice and relaxed. Now we're doing the loop. The breath is nice and slow. Awareness in the hara. Peripheral vision, noticing small details. I am. Let's do just one or two more loops, slowing the breathing down. Awareness in the hara. And open, open awareness, noticing details. Be aware if you can hear traffic. And in your mind saying the phrase, I am. And that's the loop. It's simple. Those four elements. Slow breath, drop awareness in the hara. Widen your awareness and say the phrase, I am. Take a deep breath in and a nice sigh. Make a big ah sound. Ah. And after you do any practice, just be aware. That was a practice that we just did. Be aware. Mm. Eyes open. So again, if you feel comfortable sharing your image, I support that, do it, you're doing that. I don't want you to, I'm not, I'm not asking you to burst through your edge, but if your edge is comfortable with that, it can support you in an expansion and it creates a, a more connected community. Also, if you choose to have any questions or if you have any questions, even the most subtle questions, please feel free to ask them. But, uh, you know, so that was a practice. And what we just did is what I call the, what I call the de-escalation template. This is the de-escalation template. And so what I'm suggesting is, is that, you know, getting that simple, simple practice down, it's very, very simple, it's four details. You're slowing the breathing down, you're dropping awareness into the hara, you're widening your awareness and you're saying the phrase internally, I am. And so what you do is you practice this on a regular basis. You know, I had someone ask me, you know, well, do you just do it when you have a conflict? Well, you, it's, it's similar to, if, how often do you do fire drills? You don't do fire drills right when the fire is happening. Okay, everybody, let's do a fire drill, <laughs> right? No, you know, you do it in advance of those challenging moments. You make it a regular flow of every day that you're often doing the de-escalation template. And so part of what it does is it trains you to remember that what you're really doing is de-escalating yourself. And when you are de-escalating yourself, you are automatically de-escalating the entirety of the situation, but you're doing it by focusing on that which you actually have control over. And in that process of doing that, what you also do is do what I call a nonlinear de-escalation. When you are in a, a, a situation, a hot situation with someone, you have the choice. You can either support it getting hotter or you can either, or you can cool it down. That's your choice. And, you know, it's, it's one of those elements you want to remember. The easiest thing in the world is to hate someone who hates you. But at the same time, and at the same time, if you recognize that you can do the de-escalation template, you can calm yourself, you will automatically create possibility of genius accessing the space, which, I, which means that's what genius does. Genius does something that you never would expect. And then all of a sudden it's better in a way that you never expected it would be better. But you know, genius doesn't do it the way you, th if, if, it, if it was gonna go the way you thought, it wouldn't be genius, <laughs> right? There's always a surprise. Like, whoa, I didn't expect that, that was genius. We have to give genius the possibility of doing something unexpected. That means we have to do something that allows genius to do something unexpected for us. So many times what happens is, is that people want things to happen. They want things to get better, but they want it to go the way that they want it to go. Clearly that's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't think anyone says, you know what? Oh, wow, this has all gone exactly the way I hoped. 
right? Has anyone, if you raise your hand, if you, you know, because if you do raise your hand, you say this all with the way you hope, I definitely want you to talk because I want you to be the lead of this presentation because it hasn't gone exactly where I was hoping. But, and see, that's the, that's, that's the thing. We, the, the, the living life as an invitation to your genius. And remember the word genius is related to the word genie, genie. You know, remember that word genie, the, the genie in the lamp? The genie does something magical. The genie fulfills wishes. The genie is the wish fulfiller. The genius is the energy that fulfills wishes. That's why it is the, you know, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. The, the, the need is the wish, the deep, deep hearted wish. The genius fulfills the wish, but it doesn't fulfill your greed. It doesn't fulfill, there is diabolical genius. You know, Mr. E, you know, was it Dr. Evil? You know, a guy with the finger, you remember Dr. Evil, you know? There are diabolical genius. Those are people who are committed to idolatry. You know, they, they objectify something. They, you know, objectify, well, essentially what they objectify is the calcification of their own ego. You know, they, they are worshiping their own ego. That is a form of, of stimulating genius, but it, it is, it's a diabolical genius because it has to destroy everything to make itself seem big. We're talking about actually accessing true genius, which is constructive. So I want to suggest to you that when you do activate genius, you are going to be involved with constructive elements. Now, again, you know, remember on my YouTube channel, Touching the Edge, I am doing this 40-day challenge, an invitation to genius. And this is what I'm also doing to you with you right here, right now, is inviting you to get in contact with your own genius, your relationship to genius. It is not about being popular. It's about getting inspired. It's about knowing that you can make a difference and choosing to make a difference. But realizing that you have to make a difference in your own life. Right? I can't see what it says there. I'm sorry. So you have to make a difference of what, what you know, choose to make a difference in your own life. And you have to do it today. And that's, and that's by, you know, genius is sitting right next to you. Genius has been trying to get your attention and you're like, no, man, I got other stuff to deal with. You know, it's about breathing and relaxing into it right now because genius is that subtle, 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 subtle voice that's calling to you. So um, please, if there's any questions or statements, please let me know. So otherwise I'll just keep rambling, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but, but, you know, I just really want to encourage you because you need it right now and you know you do. You know you do, but it's not from someone else. There's no like Arnold Schwarzenegger character who's gonna come busting through the door. The genius you need is actually sitting in your chair, but it's not sitting in your, your, your tight relationship to doubt. It's in the expansiveness in, of the sky, which is who you really are. And, and, and again, I am not suggesting hiding from the challenge, you know? I mean, th there is a flow. I'm, I'm, I'm 57 years old. I'm like, a, I, I am in the, this body that, that I connect with, I'm connected with, which I love, this beautiful body, which I'm connected with, which I love. It's, it's like a classic automobile. It's like a 64 Corvette. Now, I know some of you are going to say like a 64 Gremlin, but I'm saying it's like a 64 Corvette that a really, really dumb kid used to own. That's, that's this body. I mean, like right now, I'm, I can't, my, I'm, my, I'm, a, I'm dealing with a frozen shoulder. We all are having challenges, health challenges. You know, I have family members who have serious health challenges. We all do. We all have stuff going on in the world that we don't know how to, to manage. But that's what's calling to us. What do you do when you're thirsty? You don't ask someone else what to do. You trust your deepest heart. You, your heart knows what to do. 
That is your genius. When you're thirsty, you drink water. Now, if you don't have a good barometer, I know some people when they're thirsty, they drink Coca-Cola. I know people who have only drank Coca-Cola for the last 35 years. This is a person who doesn't understand when they're thirsty, they actually need water. So just because you have a need doesn't mean that you're in touch with what the need is actually asking you to do. Same thing with, with eating food. What, what, what do you do when you're hungry? You eat. Some people only eat McDonald's. So it's not just about being hungry. It's about being in tune with your nutritional needs so that when you, that you can tell, you know, you know how it goes, like some people who really eat healthy, if they eat just a little bit unhealthy, they don't, they don't feel good. But a person who's used to not eating healthy, they can eat unhealthy all the time. And that's, hey, it's great. It was delicious. Right? This is what happens when we start consuming food that blocks us from our nutritional source, which is our vital energy. So we're talking about making sure that we're eating the right materials that, so that we're doing the right stuff that works to ask us to, for us to access our genius. We have to begin to learn what is doing it. And we have to begin to learn how to pay attention to ourselves on a very, very subtle level. So let's do that together. Let's do that together. It's so easy to do. It's so easy to do, and it's so vital that you do it. So let me give you one suggestion. One, uh, again, it's, it's, it's just a, a few. The three pillars, make sure that you have three different levels of practice. Study, make sure that you're studying. There's this really, really great meditation teacher I wanna share with you. Um, oh yeah, Drake Poe, that's him. That dude is great. He's got a website, drakepo.com. I love that guy. And his, and his channel, Touching the Edge, is doing an invitation to Genius right now. So for 40 days, I'm on like day five. Every day I'm putting up a, a short video and a, and a short uh, blog post. But activate study. Activate community. Remind yourself of how beautiful human beings are. Don't just get absorbed with human beings not being able to connect. Genius is always about finding solutions. It's not about getting stuck. So community, which is also called this, the Sangha, the spiritual community. I did a video a couple of days ago. I, 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 I said I want to introduce people to one of my friends. And, and that friend was David Bowie. And one of, um, someone was talking to me about the video and I mentioned it. And they said, oh, you knew David Bowie? And I'm going, well, no, not exactly. <laughs> no, I didn't actually know David Bowie. But I'm saying he's one of my friends because this is one of the ways of stimulating the relationship to genius by, by immersing yourself in someone like that you really were really inspired by. You know, the, the, the third one is actually doing practice. It's so important right now to do immersive practice every single day. I don't know about you, but I always, well, I, I will say that part of what was, why I'm, I was fortunate is I, I, I was put in a position where I was having such fears that I had to learn how to manage them. And I, and I found meditation practice. And so in some ways, I'm, what I'm managing right now is not more challenging than what I managed then, but it is equally challenging. And so it's almost like uh, being a, a Jedi, you know what I mean? You know, what I'm suggesting is, is learning a fluid practice that's active moment to moment, because what I'm feeling is a sharp edge of vulnerability from moment to moment. Isn't that true for anyone else? You know, all of a sudden I might be, you know, at the coffee shop, I'm getting coffee and all of a sudden there's a con conversation and it goes to a place I'm not expecting. That I find to be painful at times. So what I'm saying is, is that we want to activate a relationship to genius that's fluid so that moment to moment, genius is the edge right there in the back of your mind, the chronic pain that you've been experiencing the last few years. Genius is you being there and being at peace with that and saying, okay, what is good about my life with this? How did this make my life grow? How did I improve because of all that has happened? You know, 
So to me, this is again, part of the genius. So those are the three pillars, practice, study, and community. And making sure that you're not spending too much time with communities going somewhere that you don't want to go. This is such a wonderful, vibrant community. Making sure that you do things that are involving this community, making sure that you take advantage of different things the community offers, not just for yourself, but because your participation acts to support the whole. You know, it's so important that we do things that are soothing, not just to ourselves, but that, but that support the whole. So activate the three pillars. Activate the 10 state changers. The 10 state changers recognizing that your state is your emotional state right now. It is not who you are, it's who you think you are. <clears throat> People describe themselves as being anxious. No, they are not anxious, they're, exper they're experiencing anxiety and those two statements are very, very different. So we activate the, the state changers, which are those techniques that pop the bubble of the state that you're currently in. You may say you have anxiety, but if you jump in an ice cold uh, lake, if you do the polar plunge, you're not gonna be thinking about having anxiety right then. You're gonna be like, well, that's not, that's not primary. So we make sure that we're doing practices on a regular basis that shift us out of those elements, okay? So, so the 10 state changers, making sure that you're hanging with the right people. You know, if you're on a plane going to Los Angeles, if everyone's going to New York, you're on the wrong plane. If you want to go someplace that you want to be in, if you want to go to the Caribbean, then don't get on a plane that's going to someplace that you're not at all wanting to go to. Choose your direction right now in a way that is positive. Let this time make you more yourself, not less yourself. We're seeing a lot of people becoming less themselves. I hear people saying, oh, my cousin used to be this or that. He used to be this. He used to be a wonderful, funny guy. And now all he is is angry. You know, it's kind of like those, uh, those, those ads of, of meth addiction. You know, the before and after ad. You know, who looks at those ads and say, you know, I want to try meth. Oh, my God, this looks great. But that's what people are doing. You know, you never have any two kids walking by an alley and seeing a, 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 a man who's just lost within the realm of addiction laying in the alley soaked with urine. You never have two kids go, oh my God, I want to do that with my life. But before you know it, there'll be someone else who's applying for the job. This happens because we are not listening to the spirit of genius. It is available to you right now. This is the best time of your life. This is the best time of your life. You just have to figure out how it's the best time of your life. <laughs> you know, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So more elements of, of, of the relationship to the invitations of genius. Uh, again, study. I want to show you some of more of my friends, you know, and again, you know, uh, in, in, in my study, you know, the Lotus Sutra said to, to, uh, to do study and create a relationship to, to teachers in a way that um, is more than just a book that you're reading. When you find that person, Maya Angelou, you know, you've known her or whoever that person is your whole life. You've been inspired by this person your whole life. Soak that person in. Soak them in. And these are some great, great teachers. The very first one I'm going to show you is, her name is Pima Children. I just want to show you Pima Children. Start where you are. Pima Children. Starting where you are is called the pathway to genius. You know, someone says, well, hey, I need to get to Chicago. And well, you say, well, start here and get on the highway on 94. Start where you are. That's the pathway to genius. By the way, that's not my favorite book of hers. My favorite book of hers is called The Wisdom of No Escape. The Wisdom of No Escape. So we have to stop trying to run from this stuff, guys. Excuse me for, for that phrase. 
we have to stop running from this. This is where we're meant to be. Again, it's like being 57, all right? I have, to, I have learned how to frame things to make me feel like I'm winning, okay? It's called grading on the curve. <laughs> uh, by the way, I really want to encourage you to realize that, that, that you know, part of this relationship to genius is developing a different relationship to your body, developing a different relationship to your physicality, developing a different relationship to your posture, and developing a different relationship to back pain. We are all in the position where we're sticking our head out all the time. And the other thing about this, this is the, what happens with the computer. The other thing about this is stress also uh, chronically pulls your shoulders forward and pulls your head out. And the more that your head chronically comes out, the more that you have stress subliminally. And so it's really important to improve our posture, but this is also a great book to read about back pain. I just wanna bring this up, Dr. Sarno. The Mind Body Prescription. This is a radical book about back pain. Just a couple more books, and then uh, and then we'll we'll finish up. You know, I'm you know I'm eclectic. I come from every you know background. That was you know I, I I'm African American. I've been highly influenced by Taoism and Zen Buddhism. I've studied for you know from all over the world. Highly influenced by Greek culture and Roman culture, the Stoic philosophy of Seneca. Stoicism, my friends, highly suggest that you get the Daily Stoic. Highly suggest you get the Daily Stoic. Highly suggest you get the, the, um, the uh, um, meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Highly suggest the med meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Highly suggest the, uh, the, the book on life, the Manual for Living by Epictetus. The Manual for Living. So this is the last one I'm going to show you. The Dhammapada, the sayings of the Buddha, my friend, by this gentleman right here. Please get this book. Please get this book. This book is very small bites. Very small bites. The analysis is good, but I'm asking you to read the actual book. Okay. So just want to give you those materials for study. Any questions or statements? Man, this is so exciting. This time of our life is so exciting on so many different levels. The invitation to genius is really the invitation to choose. You're going to be in the elevator, right? Are you going to choose up or down? That's the invitation. If you have someone in an, in an elevator and they're on the 100th floor, they start on the 100th floor and they're going down, and they're going to go into the subterranean basement 10 levels down, and you have someone else who started at the bottom in the basement, three levels lower, there's going to be a point where they cross, you know, on the second floor. One's going on the way down, and one's going on the way up. You know? Genius is choosing to go on the way up. All it is is choosing to improve some area of your life. Genius is choosing where you feel the edge and being honest with yourself about it because you can improve it. You know, you can improve as an example. And by the way, when you improve your relationship to genius, you improve all of our relationship to genius because we are connected. We are family. We're even more than family. We are one. That's my perception of reality. So activating your relationship to genius, pick the area that you feel the biggest challenge. And that's what I'm doing, by the way, this 40 day practice, choose it today and improve some area of your life for just 40 days, no matter what happens. Yes, go right ahead. Ask, go ahead, Sherry. Good. I wasn't able to unmute before. So thank you for being here for your words of, of wisdom. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, since you've done this for, for so long, mm -hmm. um, what is the next levels? Where where are you at, or what are the next levels that we can hope to to achieve about, about what you're saying about this this genius? Since you have have lived it, maybe you could give us some some examples or or some ways to to do that, please. Yeah. So the next levels are always available to you right now. Gen again, genius is always whispering. Genius is a step ahead of where we are. 
So genius is here right now whispering, hey, this is what you should suggest. This is what you should consider doing next. So where we are, genius is also very likely, very often in an area where we think it is not. That's why it's there. So what we do is we develop a relationship. We don't know what to do, so we do what we know. And by developing a relationship to, to values that are bedrock values. Now, values are not a destination, they're a direction. They're like the North Star. You just keep going towards them. So by understanding what your values are, and I suggest you know trying on the values, and this doesn't come from me, this comes from the Lotus Sutra. Kindness, compassion, joy. Joy is not a sense of happiness, it's a sense of being on mission. It's a sense of purpose and positive indifference. Positive indifference is accepting, it's, it, in positive indifference, it, the, the best definition of positive indifference is the song, Let It Be by the Beatles. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mo Mother Mary comes to me singing songs of wisdom, let it be. So, so we know these values. We know, okay, this is how, what, what I need to do. I need to find a way to relax into allowing this to be as it is. So we do things that we know to do right then. We know we so, soothing and calming comes first. And then when we calm down, and by the way, that's what we did before. What do we do? We did, that was called the de-escalation template, that practice that we did together. The, the, four, the, four, you know, the four elements, slow the breathing down, drop awareness into your hara, widen your awareness and say the phrase I am. And then what that does is it, it, it de-escalates you. And then that's when genius, when you get de-escalated, that's when the still voice that's whispering you in your ear becomes the flood of the great mighty river. So that, that's my suggestion. And, 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 and we can kick, kick start it. We can kick start it. So let me give it a, one more suggestion. Sherry, I have one more suggestion around that. And then I want to check in with you to see if that, that worked or if I, if I was too verbose. As you can tell, I can maybe get a little wordy at times, you know. So so, <laughs> so I want to share with you what I what I call my de-escalate, not my de-escalation template, but my coaching, my coaching uh, 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 template. So so what what I'm saying is is that right now you need to build yourself a house. We're in a situation where the winds are blowing. This is not a time. This is not like living on the beach in some Polynesian, you know, just, oh, it's just beautiful out here. The winds are blowing. So we need to build a structure. And so every structure is, it has to have a foundation. And so I'm going to ask you, if you have a pen, to write this down. This is my coaching template. The, the structure has to have a foundation of passion. You have to build your relationship to your passion, not faking it. It has to be real. That's the foundation. Now, the three there's three rooms to the house, and each of these rooms are, is about your passion. One room is your passion for your passion. I'm talking, you know, I you know I I did a I did a video. I, you know, I'm putting out a lot of material, so I get mixed up if I did videos or blog posts, but I did something recently. And I was talking about being like in like fifth or sixth grade and I was in the science fiction book club, okay? And I'm looking around the room and I'm like, I'm like this, you know, like this big dorky kid, you know, and I look out, all the kids in the area were in this room with like all the dorks of like the entire like regional area had all come to this one, one library and we were in the back room and I was like, oh my God, everyone's a dork here. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm a dork. You know, this was that moment of dawning in my life. And now I am what is called an adult dork, otherwise known as an eccentric. Okay, so your passion for your passion is, you know, a lot of times it's stuff that you were passionate about then. For instance, back then I was, you know, passionate about science fiction. It might be something in relationship to your early passion in life. It might be uh, something you really loved. You know, consider going back to your early life and going, sifting through what you used to love to do and finding some connection to it now. It could be some new passion that you've created. It could be crocheting or knitting, uh, uh, learning a language, playing an instrument. Dive into it. Your passion for your passion. Second 
is your passion for service. Find a way to fulfill your social contract. Don't just focus on your own issue, although that's important. You know, my issue, the wounds I've received in this issue around race have been very, very damaging, but it's also the source of my resilience. But, you know, what I've learned to do, though, is develop a, a relationship to other groups. You know, you know how when uh, you see some famous person doing a public service, it's always an illness they got, you know what I mean? Or their family member has. They never do an illness that they don't have. What I'm saying is, yes, put energy towards your demographic, but also put energy towards another demographic. Passion for service. Okay, the last one, the last room is a passion for learning how to soothe and calm yourself. A passion for learning how to soothe and calm yourself and learning how to listen and develop a relationship with your intuition. And then to follow that path of intuition, which is the path of genius. Now, everyone where you are, if you wouldn't mind, draw three circles for me. Three circles. And after you've drawn three circles, if everyone at once could pick up and show us what your three circles look like, if you can, if you have, have it available, just show us what your three circles look like. Okay, we got three circles there. More three circles, please. Uh, okay, three circles there. Okay, okay. So now I'm gonna ask you to draw three circles, but this time draw, draw three circles so that they're all combined. All three of these circles, not all on top of each other, but all related to each other. These are the three rooms of the house. Okay, yeah, there we go. There's some, there's, yeah. So now, now yours look like the, you have two circles that are related to each other, but I, I'm asking you to draw three circles that are each equally related to each other, not just connected to one, but each all three connected so that they overlap. Okay, beautiful. Yep, there we go, right there. You see like this circle, this, this young, this person has drawn, this young person here has drawn. You can see that there's a certain part of the drawing that all three circles are combined and all three circles are layered together in that spot. That is genius. That is going to be your ultimate access point for genius. So if you want to know how to access genius, activate the three rooms and go for it anywhere you find it. Don't, don't get like, no, no, no. You know, it's like the, the old saying, you know, Katrina, you know, the guy's on his roof and, and, and his buddy comes by with a robot. Hey, man, come on, come on. He's like, no, man, I have faith in God. He goes, okay, bro, I, you could come with me, but okay, he rolls on. All of a sudden, <laughs> helicopter. We got you, come on, throws the ladder down. He goes, no, God's gonna save me. And then he dies. And then he's at the pearly gates, so to speak, you know, that old image of the pearly gates. And he's like, and he's mad. He's like, how come God didn't save me? He said, man, we sent you several people. So when genius comes to you, breathe into it and flow with it. If, it. if it comes to you through the process of, of crochet, flow into that. If it comes to you in, in some passion to do just what you, I know someone who has really made a real change in the world because in the times that have been going on, she got back into a love of sewing. She had a love of sewing as a kid. And she got into a sewing like group. And now they're really doing the sewing thing. And the, the leader of the group had been pretty naked, but when this other prank came in, the whole group just flowered. M making a change in the world is not always like the most dramatic thing. When you are happier, you're gonna be better in the world. If you're not flipping somebody off on the highway, I will suggest that the world is a better place. <laughs> You know, so that, you know, so we have the structure, but uh, we do need a roof, right? Don't we need a roof? You can't just have the three rooms. So you need a roof and I call it a thatched roof. 
a thatched roof. And the thatched roof is kindness. And you have to work it every day. Every day you have to redo the thatch roof. You know, thatch roofing, if you ever look into thatch roofs, they're actually quite effective, but they don't just like, you can't just leave it. You have to be, you have to be working every day. Kindness, kin, this is family. We are one. We are one. And so the invitation to genius is the invitation to oneness, which is kindness. And so that is my coaching model. So any questions or statements? Sherry, I'm sorry, that was so verbose. That was all the answer to your question. Did I just go overboard? You were like, oh God, I wish he would shut up. I was, I just met that one. Thing. Okay, Drake, enough, enough. Did that answer the question at all? Or at least yes, it did. Enough? Actually, it was, I think, one of the more pertinent um, points of what you made for today, because I think you brought it all together, at least for me. So okay, thank, beautiful. thank you very much. Thank you so much. And by the way, that to me, that is the invitation of genius. <clears throat> Let me share with you something now, you know, here in closing, you know, I have been studying my entire life, my entire life. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm considering not telling my story anymore, you know, just really letting it go. But I'll share it with you a little bit right now. I, I started, uh, I got interested in meditation practice when I was eight years old and I started working to do it when I was 11. And uh, I got into it originally through, uh, the very first entree was the TV show Kung Fu. And so anyway, I feel torn because I think it feels like an interesting story to me, but I also realize I have to let it go. But anyway, I, I got into it through this TV show called Kung Fu that came on in 1972. And I was in a situation where I didn't have any mentorship and I was very afraid. I was a very, 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 very tough situation. Uh, and um, everywhere I was. And I also tough in the home and also external. I grew up in an Irish community. And um, um, just really, really intense. And then also too, you know, I had cousins growing up in the projects. And so I got to see that and my stepfather was Jewish. And so I got a real eclectic sort of experience of, and, and, and one of the things it did for me is a lot of people weren't that nice, but it also gave me a sense that we as a people were, were messed up, something system, systemic. And so uh, I never forget my experience dealing with race because that has been profound, but I'm really interested in that which we connects us all that also comes out into our individual stuff. So, you know, and, and I'm really, really, really feeling that we, all, we it's really incumbent upon all of us to really step up and realize we're a lot more important than we think we are. You can't afford to languish in depression or anxiety or, or despondency. You know, it's okay to have those experiences, but we just have to train ourselves to recognize that we're bigger. So uh, uh, any questions or statements, you know, and uh, you know, I'm glad to do any, ask, answer any questions. I'm glad to take you through more, another practice if you'd like, or uh, I'm also glad to let you go on with your, your magnificent days. So any questions well, or statements? Yes. Well, I just had a statement to make. I was wondering why do I have this urge to get back into paint by numbers. When I was little, um, I was into paint by numbers. I sent away uh, for some, um, with some box tops from cereals. So I might be dating myself, but you could send in these box tops from cereals to get prizes. And one of my prizes was a little tiny oil paint by number set. And mm -hmm. so I just yesterday ordered a couple of these. I'm like, I gotta get back into this. I gotta get back into this. And so with, with what you were just saying about uh, reconnect with something that you were passionate about before. So I'm marveling at the synchronicity of that happening yesterday and then your talk today. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And thank you for sharing that. And again, that's part of this inspiration of genius. So. You know, one of the things that I found is that I really couldn't depend on on others. I didn't. I never met my father. I never had adults that I that were mentoring me, and so I I, I had to learn. <clears throat> and even and even people that I looked to for mentorship, you know, for example, um, great artists, musicians, authors, actors. 
But one of the things that we've noticed here in this modern age is that if you find out everything you know about, if you find out everything about the people that you admire, you find that maybe you don't admire them as much as you thought you did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and so and and so, um, you know, what I've had to learn to do is be able to receive good, but not 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 receive good because I find out, you know, painful elements about these people or these situations. But what I am saying though, is if we've, it's like if with, with this kind of process, you don't have to understand everything. You just have to understand to get to the edge of your lights right now. You get that set, that paint by number set and you start just doing it and you breathe into it. But, but part of it is that you have to understand that genius is always about brilliance it may feel like it just makes you feel good. And if that's the only thing it does, and you just, all you do is you feel a connection to flow. And, you know, so even in, in the process of what you're saying right now, you can see that there's genius involved with it because, mm -hmm. because it's about flow. It's about painting. That's flow. It's, a, it's about the fact that you thought about this yesterday. And also the next day we're talking about connecting with something like that. There's flow. And so, it may not even be in this area, you know. I'm an unusual meditation instructor. I recognize that. This is called, you know, but hey, I'm bold with it. But, you know, so it's like, it doesn't just stay where you are, right? It spreads out the entirety, <laughs> right? Right all over, you know? If you if you pee in a pool, it doesn't just stay where you are. It, sp it spreads out the entire. <laughs> How <laughs> you know, vivid! How vivid! <laughs> yes, you know, I'm a poet. You know, I, you know. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I really encourage that. But but what I really want to say to you though is, make sure you realize that it's not just for you. It's a it's a, you know, have a sense. You know, like I ring the bell. Have a sense of the sacred with it. You are helping all of us by doing this, and you never know how much that will go. So thank you very very much. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or statements? All right, so I'm really asking you all to really understand that you have been experiencing existential fatigue. Mm -hmm. Existential fatigue is when you're tired, you're worn out. Everybody is, you know? You know, if, if you're in a situation and you're living like in Flint, Michigan and everyone has high levels of lead, don't expect you don't have high levels of lead. So it's important that you begin to have a more active care, but that's why this is the opportunity of your life. This has the opportunity to be the most joyful period of your life. Your time where you look back and you say, that was the period where I really came to understand my relationship to my own genius. So I'm gonna ring the bell here for you all. I'm gonna ask you just to listen carefully. Here we go. So the very last thing I would like to say to you is that one of the relationships to genius is really the relationship to time. Having, uh, you know, and again, you know, we want to we want to hearken back to the the, the the crazy wisdom of the uh, Taoist masters and the um, the Sufi masters. You know, where they'll say opposites are true. We need to slow down to speed up. But we also, but we have to really, we really do need an urgency. We need to enjoy our lives today. I bring my hands in the prayer position and I bow and I thank you for your time. You are truly magnificent. Thank you for sharing the light of your genius. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And don't forget, uh, Touching the Edge is my, my uh, um, YouTube channel. Every day for 40 days, I'm encouraging people to have a relationship to genius. And, and drakepoe.com, drakepoe, P-O-W-E.com, every evening for 40 days, I'm putting up a blog post around the same subject. For this 40 days, you know, remember, genius is not about treading water. It's about moving towards something. So I don't care what it is, paint by numbers, knitting, uh, getting involved politically, but do it from a positive. Don't try to tear down. Do it from a, a, a building up. You know, try to get to where you want to go, not to be like you know demonizing. You know, in my perception, 
you know. But anyway, those two sources I, will be invaluable. So we're building 40 days. This is like day six. We're building for 40 days in that. And I'm asking you to really, really build the first four months of the year. For the first four months of this year, no matter what happens, focus on the energy you're putting out and learning how to put energy out that's in relation to the service of your genius, that intuitive flow that's coming to you. It doesn't have to make sense, okay? It doesn't have to make sense, but you know, activate that for the first four months of this year, no matter what, other people can resort to cannibalism, okay? We will, hey, for this four months, focus on what you do, all right? So thank you so much, and, and, I, and I thank you for your time. And if, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or statements, so. Thank you. So, thanks, Drake. Bye. Right. Thank Bye -bye. you, Drake. And Thank that's you. um, you've probably seen the picture now. <laughs> that's uh, Chris and Katie May are in the sanctuary. They Thank raised you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. It was really great fun for me. Thank you. <laughs>